Welcome Algebra 1 students. In this video, we're just going to go through all of the methods for factoring and answering the question again, how do I factor this expression? For this video, I highly suggest using this flowchart uh, because we will be going through the different steps. Step one, looking for a GCS. Step two, identifying the number of terms. And then based on the number of terms, that will lead us to an appropriate factoring method. So let's get started. Our first example is 25 or 5x to the fourth plus 25x squared. So the first step is that we look for a GCS, meaning do both terms have a common factor? I see that both terms have five in common. So yes, this has a GCS. We're going to go ahead now and factor out that GCS from both terms, and then we'll continue on with our flow chart. So both of these have five in common. So if I write these out as products, this is five times 4x's plus 5 times 5 times 2x's. It looks like they have 5x squared in common. And once I factor that out, I'm left with x squared in the first term and 5 in the second term. Once we've factored out the GCF, we go on to our next question. How many terms are left? There are two terms. And so we go to our last factoring method. We look at the two terms, and when it's a binomial, if you looked in the flow chart, the only thing that we're looking for is, could it be a difference of two squares? Well, it's not a difference, and five is not a perfect square. So that means our factoring method all along was to factor out the GCS, and we are done. Okay, in our second example, we have x squared minus seven x plus 10. First step, is there a GCS? Well, I don't see a leading coefficient here, and seven is a prime number, so no, there is no common factor here to factor out. Identify the number of terms. There are three of them. So in our flow chart, we would be looking in the middle column for the factoring methods for trinomials. I do notice that this does not have a leading coefficient, which leads me to believe that our factoring method will be p's and q's. To do p's and q's, we find two numbers, that have a sum of negative seven and a product of 10. So over off to the side, what times what equals 10? That when I add them together, I get negative seven. I know that those two numbers are negative two and negative five. So our final answer is a product of two binomials, x minus two in the first, x minus five in the second, and that's your factoring with P's and Q's. Okay, example three, 14R cubed minus 10R squared plus 49R minus 35. Uh, the first thing that stands out to me is that this is, I'm actually gonna skip this step, this is a four term polynomial, which means the only method that we can use here is factor by grouping. Let's go back now and check for a GCF. I don't see a common factor among all four terms, but I do see a common factor among the first two and the second two. So there is not a GCF among all four terms, but we are going to do factor by grouping because that's the only method that you can do when your expression has four terms. So here we go. We're gonna start by putting in our groups, the first two together, the second two together. Then we do our GCF factoring in both groups. So what is the greatest common factor of 14 and 10? I think two, so we were gonna write these as products. 14 is two times seven, r cubed is r times r times r, minus 10 is two times five, r squared is r times r. Greatest common factor of 49 and 35 is seven. Uh, 49 is seven times seven, and then bring along the r, and 35 is seven times five. Now, what do they have in common? Uh, they looks like in the first one, we have two R squared in common, and in the second one, we just have seven in common. So let's go ahead and factor those out. When I factor out two R squared in the first binomial, what do I have left? I have seven R left in the first term, and it looks like minus five left in the second term. Now remember, this is called the common binomial factor. Our goal is to get that over on the side as well. When we factor out the plus seven, what am I left with? I'm left with seven R in the first term and minus five in the second term. Are these the same? Yes, they are, which means we can go ahead and write out our final answer. 
They have seven R squared, which is basic, or seven R minus five, which is basically a, a common factor, and then two R squared plus seven. And that's your final answer for factor by grouping. Okay, our next example, two B squared plus B minus six. Well, first step, let's look for a GCF. Uh, I know two goes into six, but the leading coefficient of B is one, so that means two is not gonna go into B, and it does not look like we have a GCF here. No greatest common factor. There are three terms, so now according to our flow chart, we're gonna check our factoring method for trinomials. There is a leading coefficient, which means we cannot use P's and Q's. And two and six are not perfect squares, which means this is not a perfect square trinomial. That leaves us with the option of factoring with either super grouping, slip and slide, or double cross. I'm gonna go ahead and use slip and slide as my factoring method for this one because it has a leading coefficient of two and it is not a perfect square trinomial. So here we go, step one, flip the two down to the end. We're gonna be multiplying two times negative six. And now we are changing our trinomial and we're working in an alternate universe here. So I put the quotations in, our trinomial became b squared plus b minus 12. From here, it's now a trinomial with a leading coefficient of one, so we can play the p's and q's game. What two numbers have a sum of, remember there is a hidden one here, and a product of negative 12. And as I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about it, the numbers that come to mind are negative three and four. Let's double check that. Yep, that looks good. So now we're gonna factor our alternate trinomial. So we have B minus three and B plus four. Remember, this is not your final answer. This is the factored form of this trinomial. In your final answer, we're going to slide B2 that we originally slipped to the end. We're gonna slide it underneath the two terms because that undoes the slip. It undoes the multiplication. If we can simplify the, um, the fraction, then we will, and if not, then we slide it in front. So can I simplify three divided by two? No, so I'm gonna slide it, continue in front, and we have two B minus three. Can I simplify four divided by two? Yes, four divided by two is two. So our final answer here is two B minus three times B plus two. Okay, in our next example, we have 9b squared minus 25. Step one, look for a GCF. The only factors of nine are nine, three, and one, and none of those go into 25, so there is no GCF here. One, two, there are two terms, which means the only factoring method that will work here is a difference of two squares, or it can't be factored. So let's see if it's a difference of two squares. First of all, it is a difference because it has subtraction. Nine and 25 are both perfect squares, so is b squared. So yes, we will be using a difference of two squares as our factoring method. Now this is nice because that means that our steps for factoring are going to be pretty quick. Because it's a difference of two squares, all we have to do is take the square root of the first term and the square root of the second term. Now the square root of 9b squared means what times itself equals 9b squared. Well, three times three is nine, and b times b is b squared, so I know that the square root of nine b squared is three b. Same thing over here, what's the square root of 25? That's five times five, so I know the square root is five. That's step one, let's go ahead and set up our answer. Our answer is going to be a product of two binomials. The first term in each binomial is three b. The second term in each binomial is five. And notice that there again, there is no middle term. That means how do you get a middle term of zero? You make one of them positive and one of them negative. And that's how you factor with difference of two squares. Our final example for today is nine X squared minus 24 X plus 16. First thing that stands out to me is that these are some pretty big numbers. So let's look for a GCS. Well, the only factors of nine are one, three, and nine. And those don't go into the other two, so there is no GCF here. There are three terms, and we're looking at this trinomial. It does have a leading coefficient, which means we cannot use P's and Q's. Is it a perfect square trinomial? Well, let's see. If the first and the last terms are perfect squares, let's see if the middle term makes sense. 
Remember, to test the middle term, we take the square root of the first term, which is 3x, because 3 times 3 is 9, x times x is x squared. You take the square root of the last term, which is 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. You multiply these together, and then you add them up. 3x times 4 is 12x. 12x plus 12x is 24x. And look at that. That's your middle term. So yes, this is a perfect square trinomial. Perfect square trinomial. From here, it only takes two steps to factor. You set up your two binomials. The first term is the square root of the first term. The second term is the square root of the last term. Now, to determine which is the, if it's either positive or negative, you look at that middle term. Is it positive or negative? It is negative, which means both of these contain subtraction. Now, remember, when you have 3x minus 4 times 3x minus 4, we can write that as 3x minus 4 squared. And that's how you factor a perfect square trinomial. Okay, remember, when you are reviewing and going over the different factoring methods, it is very important to have this um, in front of you, this flow chart that will help you uh, determine which method for factoring that you should use. So in all of our examples, we covered the same number of steps. We always looked for a GCF first. Then from there, we identified the number of terms. And based on the number of terms, if it was a binomial, we were either done or used a difference of two squares. So if it's a trinomial, it all depends on the leading coefficient, and a polynomial is always factored by grouping. If you have any questions, please be ready to ask them uh, later on, and have fun factoring.